start making art. Like, sort of work with collage and um, experiment with that. Um, and you know, you don't think of it as art really at the time, but reality is that's ac actually what it is. It's a form of expression. So that's what that's what I started out doing, and then photography, and then from photography doing more collage, and then starting to do more and more mixed media, and then feeling like, you know what, I, I need to express myself more in a different way, so I, I started to attend um, the New York Studio School, and then started experimenting with drawing and art, with painting, and um, then later on sculpture. Is there anything in particular that inspires your art? I think what I've been really focusing on more so is my personal backstory and the history that I've had um, with my family. That's more of the current works that I have right now, really based on family. How is Lucy Liu the actor different from Lucy Liu the artist? Is there any difference? There is no difference. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, I think as an actor, you are working with a team of people, and when you're an artist, you're in your own space, on your own working. So that's, that's the difference only in, in terms of the amount of people that are with you, but the reality is the expression is still the same. It's, it's a separate life, you know, to be an artist than to be an actor in some ways because you have to go and sort of put yourself in a confined space and work. Um, and I think that is not an easy thing to do all the time. And I, I'm so used to being around people now that uh, it could be quite lonely. Is there any artist dead or alive that if you could meet, um, you would really love to meet? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's... I would, would have loved to have met de Kooning. Mm -hmm. um, and there is so many, I would have loved to have met Louise Bourgeois. Alright, so let's talk about this exhibition then. Um, how did the idea come about for Unhome Belongings? Unhome Belongings came through my friend Dan Chen, who is friends and has known Ryan and Adrian through the Ryan Foundation. And he talked about this foundation and how they are about exposing different cultures and arts to um, young people and to kids. And that, to me, really resonated. And then they went, we kind of went from there and then they met Shubigi, or they discussed Shubigi being the counterpart. And it all worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. If, say, a fire you know, broke out now, and you could only save one piece of work, what would you say? <laughs> which would it be? My god! Um, <laughs> I would probably save the family portrait. Why? Um, because it's I, I have a series of works that size that I um, that that's my newest series, and all of them have been painted over. So there's underneath the paintings there's family pictures, um, and I, that one wasn't painted over, and, and it has a special place in my heart. Uh, and my father passed away last October, so I. I painted that before he did, and so it has a special resonance. A way of remembering him, in a sense. Um, a way of remembering my childhood in a very positive way. Right. Miss Lou is a big name. Her artistic, her artistic ambition is equally as big as her name. And when I went to her studio, I was very pleasantly surprised by the works that she was creating and had created. And if you look at the works in the show, with her very aggressive brush strokes, with her relentless knitting, you will see that she's a very intense person who puts a lot of her heart and soul into her work. So you do have a habit of picking things up and that's where a lot of your material comes from. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, I mean, I think for me, I find objects everywhere that I am and I, I pick them up and I collect them and I find that, you know, the idea of lost and found, in fact, is about finding a home for them. Because at some point, they did have a meaning, they had a significance, they had a use. And so I, the fact that they've been discarded and, and uh, uncared for really it kind of hurts my feelings. So finding a place for them here, it, it makes me feel like, you know, they were not brought here for naught. I've been here for about 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, and it's been, everyone's been so kind and it's been, the weather's beautiful. What did you expect and has anything surprised you so far? Well, I don't know. I, I, I really think that the museum is absolutely gorgeous. I'd heard about it and obviously seen photos and they gave me the layout, but seeing everything together and how it came together and how it's lit, I'm, I'm so pleased. 
And what are you looking forward to do most in Singapore? I would like to taste the food a little bit more. I'm definitely going to go sightseeing. I'd like to go to the zoo and the nocturnal zoo. I'm very excited about that. I love animals. We go on a cart and they go and it's open and you know the animals are exposed to you and that's exciting to me. What do you hope for people to take away from this? Um, I hope that people feel some sort of a personal connection to any of the works between the two of us, um, whether we're here or not. I, I think that when you connect to a film or a, a character or art, it really it heightens your level of, of being a human being. It gives you accessibility to something and it makes you feel like you're not alone. Right. And I want people to feel like they belong somewhere in the world um, and they're, they're not by themselves. Thanks for watching this video. Give us a like, click here to subscribe to STIR, click here for more videos and click on the little bell so you don't miss any of our content.